Okay, so I'm, I'm Rain. Um, for those of you who are new to Drupal Camp today, welcome. And um, I'm one of the Drupal Chicks track organizers for the, the camp, so I'll just give a shameless plug that later today we are doing a session to talk about getting more women into Drupal at 2 o'clock. It's kind of a conversation. Um, and you can actually ask questions anonymously on our website, so you can be as non-PC as you want because your name will not be attached to it. And that will encourage a better conversation as to why there aren't as many women in the Drupal world um, as there could be. So please, uh, please do that. Um, anyway, so shameless plug there. Uh -huh. But uh, so the topic of this session, as some of you already heard, is you have a Drupal site. Somebody built a Drupal site for you, or you got hired um, by a, you know, a nonprofit to manage their site. What do you do? How do you manage it? How do you understand what's going on? Um, so the first things that I, that I really want to start with are a couple of assumptions, are that um, you have a site of some sort. Maybe you've installed it, and you don't really know how to use it yet. Uh, maybe somebody built you a, a very fancy site and you need to work with it. And you have some kind of administrative or editor level privileges on your site. If you don't have that, if you're just an anonymous user, there's really not much that, that you can do. Um, so so the, this session assumes that you have those two things. Um, I do just want to say that if, uh, if you built your site yourself, you will have access to everything I show you today. If you did not, if you had a web developer build your site for you, chances are your site's fairly complex. And there may be very good reasons why some of the things that I show you today, you will go back and look at your site and actually discover you can't do because the web developer turned off those privileges. Um, and there's probably a good reason why they did that. So if you want access to any of the things that I talk about in this session, um, talk with your web developer and find out why they didn't give you access and then maybe you'll realize it's probably not a good idea for you to have that access or maybe you'll realize or maybe your web developer will realize that they should give you access so you'll um, so that's a conversation with your web developer um, but before I dive in I just want to ask a couple of questions um, can I just get a show of hands of anyone in this room who has a Drupal site built in Drupal 5 or earlier okay um, yeah, okay, so, so Drupal 5 uh, is an older version of Drupal, and um, so a, lot of, a lot of what I show you is, um, is still going to be relevant, but it's not quite as easy. The interface has improved significantly with Drupal 6. Um, so I'm going to be showing you everything in Drupal 6. Drupal 5 is, is a, little bit, um, a little bit different, so just be aware of that. And if you have specific Drupal 5 questions, we can look at it afterwards, or, um, or you can ask them if we have extra time. Um, another question I want to ask is how many people in this room built a site for themselves and has their own site that they're trying to administer? Okay, a, a, good, a good number. Um, and how many of you have a site that somebody else built for you? That you're working with? Okay. Okay, so it's a good representation of both. Um, and then are there any, like, or other than I just need to learn how to use this, are there any sort of burning questions that anyone has that you want to throw out to me now so that I can try to work them in? No? Okay. Yeah. Can you be talking about the roles, you know, the creative roles for users? I can add that in. Um, I kind of glazed over that because that's uh, something that web developers usually don't give access to administrators for, so, um, but I'll definitely add that in. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing that, that we're going to do then is we're going to look at how to edit page content. Um, we're going to start fairly simple. So this site um, has you know, basic page content right here. This is the page here that you're, that you're looking at. It's a node. Um, so a node is all of the content on your site. Every piece of content becomes a node. And then that node can be displayed as a page, um, or you, know, you can actually have a view that lists nodes. Um, thing, so, and then these on the side are blocks. And blocks are kind of, I like to think of them as Legos. I said this in D Views Demystified yesterday. Um, they're kind of like Legos that you can kind of add onto your, um, your page in, in viewing it. 
So when you're editing a specific page, you're probably only editing the principal node, not the blocks that are appearing on the sides. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to get this little menu up at the top. You may not get revisions. It depends on how your web developer set up your site for you, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but you will definitely have this Edit tab. Um, so you can click on the Edit tab, and um, there's some very strange styling going on in this site, so, so that's why you're going to see some things that are a little bit odd. Um, but So if you, um, if you click on that, then you can edit the title. The title is a sort of out-of-the-box field that comes with Drupal. Um, every node has a title. Every node does not necessarily have a body, but every node has a title. Um, nodes are likely to have bodies. That's going to be the content inside your node, um, the principal content. And then there may be other fields that you're going to see that are custom fields that your web developer has created. So this featured photo quote is one of those. The featured photo itself is one of those. Um, the body is default but enabled. Sometimes it may not be enabled and you might not have it for certain reasons. And then we'll talk about these other things a little bit later. Um, and then this right here, anytime you see kind of a list of words that you can choose from, that's taxonomy, which we'll also be talking about in depth because taxonomy, Drupal is built on, it functions on taxonomy. Um, if you are a librarian or have ever worked in a library, um, you'll kind of know how important taxonomy and sort of actually identifying the metadata of all of your books and, and stuff that you have in the library is. Drupal works exactly the same way. Um, so, so when you see this, that's taxonomy. Um, so when you come in here to edit, you may or may not see um, kind of this little WYSIWYG interface. That's something that your web developer can add on for you. Um, there are different WYSIWYG options. Um, every Drupal web developer is always kind of exploring better ones constantly. Um, so this is the most recent one that I, that I like. Um, but what you may see if there's no web if there's no WYSIWYG available for you, you might just see um, sort of plain text where you can put HTML. If you have some sort of basic grasp of HTML, you can enter HTML in here. Um, so if there's a WYSIWYG enabled, there will also be this enable and disable rich text function, which we can talk about later as well. Um, and here as well, it, it is. So I just want to show you... Um, which, uh, which WYSIWYG is that? Oh, this one is WYSIWYG. <laughs> okay, how about that? Yeah, it's WYSIWYG with TinyMCE as the uh, kind of thing that's running behind it. Um, so I'm just going to go to that very page. Um, so, you know, I don't remember the URL off the top of my head right now. I'm a little sleepy, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go to that page. So this is the featured photo. Oh, this isn't one with featured quotes. So let me go to this one. I know that that one has a quote on it. This is the featured photo. This is the featured quote. So these are unique content types that have been, or content fields that have been created for this content type. And then this is the title, and this is the body here. So just that you're actually seeing what, what is what. Is what. Um, Okay, I also want to point out that in these areas where you can actually enter content, so I'll enter a, a quote, um, there's also some useful formatting information that your web developer or Drupal itself, or the Drupal core, has put in here. It definitely pays to take a look at this and, and read it. And I'm actually going to give you a link to a basic HTML guide as well at the end of this session. Uh, that you can use, but um, but this tells you for absolutely certain which HTML tags your web developer has said are safe for you to use. Um, when you're actually developing a Drupal site, you can say, you know what, I really don't want my um, site, I don't want my client using tables on the site because it's going to mess this up, or I don't want my client to be able to use um, header level 6 because I've used header level 6 as something very special. So you can actually make those determinations and then not allow those kinds of, of tags um, because you can set up specific filters. 
Um, and that's something good to know when you're working with someone who's building a website for you or a developer because, um, because you can make those requests as well. You can say, you know what, I really kind of need this to work or I really don't want this to work for some reason or other. Um, so, so this is where you'll get some of that basic information. And ideally, your web developer has been nice to you and kind of added some basic instructions on their own to tell you what to do in this field. So always look for that because that's going to be helpful. Um, okay. The other thing to note is when you make changes, so I just added a quote, right? If we go back to the about page, um, there's no quote there. So I just added a quote in here and now I need to save it. And this is very important. I know it sounds silly. But, um, but it's important that you remember to save your work. Now, before I save this work, I'm going to do something else. Your, your site editor or your site developer may or may not have enabled revisions and a module called diff on your site. How many of you are very familiar with Wikipedia? Yeah, okay, so, so Wikipedia is pretty cool in that you can go in and edit. And the other thing that you can do is you can go in and you can actually take a look at the differences between the last edit and your edit or the edits before. Or maybe you're looking at a very contentious Wikipedia page and you actually want to see the history because it's entertaining. Um, or you're doing research or something. Diff and revisions allow you to enable that functionality on a Drupal site as a web developer. So if you're a client, ask for this. Because what it means is I can say, I can make sure as, as the administrator right now to check off, create a new revision, um, added a featured quote in my little log message. No end user is ever going to see this. But now I save my change. The page now has this quote. Um, there's no evidence of that little log message that I just left. However, there is this revisions tab. Let's say, oh, that quote, why did I do that? I wasn't thinking. I don't want a quote there, and, um, and I need to just quickly revert that. So I'll go to revisions, and now I get a list of all of the record of revisions to this particular piece of content. So I can see that, okay, this piece of content was added on June 12th by the user named Rain. Um, and then it was edited again by Rain. And then it was edited on July 8th by Mara. Now, I don't know what any of the changes are up through here. I have, I have no idea. So um, I can look at the differences if I want. If I want to see the difference between this revision and this revision, then I can click on this Show Diff button right here. And um, interesting. And that's not what should have happened. I think I, stri I stripped too much out. Um, all right, well, I'll, I'll find another site later and show you. But it'll be just like Wikipedia. It'll show you the differences. I, I, again, as I mentioned, I kind of stripped a lot of stuff out of the site. Um, maybe I didn't give Mara the privileges to look at revisions. I, <laughs> I really I changed a lot because I logged in as Mara instead of myself. Um, but it would show you the differences between one revision and another. The other thing that's really great here, though, is these two up here now show what I changed it, what I changed in here. So Mara, on this date, Mara bolded some text, and on this date, Mara added a featured quote. Well, let's say, um, let's say the only change Mara made was correcting an email address. And then I go in and I say, you know what, I really need to revert this because um, a lot of things got messed up somehow, so I'm reverting it. But wait, Mara fixed an email address. I need to remember after I revert to go back in and fix that email address again. It's a very practical application for this log message. Keep a log because otherwise nobody knows what's going on on your site. Um, and it also says who did it. So if you're working together, if the two of you are working together, you can actually ask him, why did you do that? It makes no sense to me. And he can explain because you know he did it. Um, so that's very useful. So if you don't, um, if your site doesn't have diff on it and you're not using revisions, um, definitely ask for that and, and try to get that set up. Um, so the other really important thing, and now I'm wondering how much I didn't give Mara the privilege to do, um, so I might have to change some permissions, which 
um, someone asked about anyway. Um, but the other, so there's some other kind of useful things to know about in this particular area. Menu settings. Menu settings allows you to automatically assign your piece of content to one of your navigation menus. So, for example, we have a menu up here. And believe me, I won't feel bad if anyone needs to leave because they realize they already know everything that I'm talking about. This is a, a, meant to be a real introduction. Um, so don't feel bad if, you're, if you need to leave. Um, okay, so menu settings. Um, this is a, the primary menu up here, the primary navigation menu. Um, as a developer, I have created a few extra menus that can be used. Um, and these are all menus. So as Mara, I can go in and I can say, you know, the about page is actually already linked here. However, I can say, you know, I don't really want the about page here. I actually want the about page to be part of oh, some other ways to give. Um, I hope that's, no, let's do something that's actually um, not ways. So I can choose a different menu. Um, I'll choose Act Now By. So just to show you what that is, Act Now By is this menu up here. So I've just chosen About to be an Act Now By, and I've given it a, a label. If you don't put a label in there, it won't go into any menu, which can be good as well. You may not want it in a top-level menu. Um, so I'm putting Act Now By, and then I'm going to save that. Sorry, I... Um, I really am sleepy. <laughs> okay, so now about has just appeared in that menu up there. Um, I'll admit that as a web developer, I tend not to give access. Sometimes I do, but I rarely give access to clients to their menus. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Now this looks weird, right? We had a very specific design. Um, or if they wanted to, you know, about's been lost here, which is fine on that display because that display is all messed up. But this display, now this is out of balance. It's supposed to line up perfectly with the picture, so now it's out of balance. Um, most, most clients, and um, if you're here, it's probably because some of you are clients um, and some of you want to work with clients. Most clients really want a design that is very specific. And it's much better. Lance gave a great talk yesterday from this by them about designing for Drupal. And it's much better. He said, um, is it yoga or is it a living statue? Uh, which I thought was great. Living statue means, you know, it's not going to change. It's lined up perfectly with the picture, right? Yoga means client wants to add a menu item. Okay, it has to change. It has to morph. And that's really the way to, to try to think. However, both, uh, both from a design perspective and also from a client perspective, sometimes that is a little more difficult in terms of adjusting because that's kind of a new way of looking at this, at this media. So that's just something to think about. Um, but so this, is, this, this site is a living statue. And adding the about at the, on the menu is, is, does um, a little bit of damage to it. Um, but that's fine. So. Um, Okay, another potential thing that you might see if your site, um, well, if your web developer or you have installed the module node words onto your, uh, onto your site, it allows you to put custom descriptions and keywords into your content. Now, they may have installed node words and enabled it for some content and disabled it for some. So you might see this on some of your content types and you might not see it on others. Um, when you see it, it means that the web developer really thinks that there should be custom keywords and description on that page for search engine purposes. So I strongly recommend that you actually make use of it. Um, search engines like the stuff to be different on every page, and I won't go into that in depth because we have really good people here who know a lot about search engine optimization, and you should go to their sessions. Um, but using this is good for search engine optimization. Um, so. And then there's this other one, URL path settings. Again, I usually don't give clients the ability to change this, and most web developers probably won't. However, there might be a reason why you want it or, or need the ability to do it. Um, I'm using, and most people use, this fantastic must-have module called Path Auto um, that allows you to set up automated alias 
um, sort of rules. So you as the web developer can say, this is a page, uh, but for every uh, case study profile, I want, it, I want the URL to be um, domain name slash case study slash whatever the title of your case study is. So you can set up an automated um, URL sort of rule, alias rule for that so that when a client creates a page or when you create a page when you're you know, entering all the content, um, the aliases are automatic, they're search engine friendly, they're user friendly. Um, but you might want to go in here, let's say for example, um, okay I had a, a, a client who recently wanted a special page that people would land on after they registered for the site. And it occurred, you know, I was thinking, well, what would the proper URL for that be? Well, maybe welcome. So domain name happens to be what's your dream slash welcome. That's a much nicer URL than um, domain name slash thank dash you dash for dash registering, right? So, and that would have been the automatic um, alias had I just left it alone. So you can uncheck automatic alias and then change the alias in here. So if we look at this up here, the URL is about our mission. If I go in here, I can just say, you know what, I actually just want it to be about. I don't want it to be about our mission. I can save that. And now the URL, see what happens. First of all, it doesn't find it because, but it does find it in the search results because of another module that I have have fallen in love with um, called Search 404, which if isn't on your site, you should definitely ask for it which automatically, um, if, if the user goes to a page that doesn't exist, it automatically does a search through the content to find what page they might be looking for. Um, but the URL has now changed. So that's also um, extremely useful. <laughs> Another potentially useful thing, um, I was working with Stand Up to Cancer um, all of last year. And we, um, we had all kinds of stuff coming in late because it was this sort of fast-paced, high-powered initiative with top-level celebrities who, you know, forcing a top-level celebrity to, um, to send you an article on time isn't exactly something that you want to have to do. So sometimes we'd get the articles later than they were supposed to say that they were published on our site. So I would go in, I would add the article, and then I would go in and I would say, you know what? Um, this article was supposed to be on our site two days ago, so for all intents and purposes, the world might as well think it was. So under authoring information, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can change who it's authored by, um, and the other is you can change when it was authored. So, um, so this was authored on June 12th. And 2009, maybe for some reason it was really supposed to be up there on June 7th. I can just go in and say, okay, that's going to be 07. And then when I save that, that will actually change. Another use for this is, um, actually I'll give you a really good use for changing authoring information. Um, being one of the Drupal Chicks track organizers, I entered some session proposals for a couple of the Drupal Chicks who are here. I didn't want my picture on their session proposals. So how do I fix that? I just go into authoring information and I just put their name instead of mine, their username on the site instead of mine, and then as far as all of you knew, they put the session proposal up, their picture's next to it, it's their session. Um, so that's a very good use for, for something like this. Um, before I keep going, because I, I could just keep going, are there any questions at this point? I just want to make sure I'm not losing anyone. Okay, great. Okay. Um, another really useful tool is publishing options. And this one's an, a very important one to know about. Um, publishing options, there's three default out-of-the-box options. There's published, promoted to the front page, and sticky at the top of lists. Um, sticky at the top of lists will tell your content to always stay at the top of any listing that it's on. The default Drupal front page has kind of this story list that sort of River of News style story list that just kind of feeds onto it. Um, well, you can tell a particular piece of content, you know what, I always want you to stay at the top of the list no matter what, no matter what sorting, 
um, etc. This site actually has that functioning on it, even though it doesn't have the default home page. Um, down here, this latest news and press is designed to always show the two most recent items, with the most recent one being at top. But as you can see, the July 16th entry is coming before the July 22nd entry. And that's because they felt that since this is a brand new site and a brand new concept, that July that what was entered on July 16th, this letter from the president, needed to stay there. And it needs to stay there for a while. So they just made it sticky, and it stayed at the top of the list. Um, if you're not using the default Drupal views, if, you, uh, if your web developer set up custom views for this, as I did with these, that won't be default. You'll need to make sure that your web developer actually set that up, other, that set up sorting to actually recognize sticky. So you may need to, you may find the first time that you use this that it doesn't work, and you may need to actually ask for it to, to work. Um, promote it to front page. This is also one of those things that may and may not work. If you're using the default Drupal front page, which is that kind of river of news, then this will definitely work. Your content will be promoted to the front page. Otherwise, this is a special setting that your web developers can use um, in sort of sorting and filtering content in the displays that are set up. And so hopefully this would actually promote the content to the front page in some capacity if that's what you want. Some sites, this one is one of those sites. Um, I am using promoted to the front page for these guys, for the because if you saw on, um, if you see here, these guys are also here. Well, I've specified which ones are allowed to show up on the front page, but that's really the only area that we're using promoted to front page, because this is not using a standard river of news in any capacity at all. So I don't want just random stuff to start appearing here, you know, somebody puts a picture on and they want it to just appear on the front page, that would mess up the entire design. So uh, that's kind of one of those things that you might need to talk with your web developer or yourself, if you're, own, if you're your own web developer, something that you'll need to consider as you're building your site. Um, okay, shoot off revisions. Okay, finding content in a list of content. Um, I mentioned earlier that I always change the menu item um, where it just says content to say edit existing content. And I think when I was uh, fixing this site to make it ready for you, I think, um, I think I only took out the edit part. I didn't take out the um, existing. But yeah, so, um, so finding your content. Um, there, are, there, there are various ways to... Um, there are various ways to find your content. And this document that I'm actually going off of is a document that I'm quite proud of that I created for this talk that you'll be able to download after it, and it'll walk you through everything. Um, but what's, uh, what you can do, and it gives you kind of the URLs that you might go to to find these things. So content is under existing content. Creating content is its own menu item by default. But actually editing content, I always pull it out to make it its own menu item. But by default with Drupal, it's under administration. It's under the site administration menu. So most everything that you're going to want to do, you're going to find under that menu. And logically, it's under content management. So if you kind of navigate down here, um, it would just say content. Here it says existing content because that's what I um, wrote. And then you would click on that. Now you have a list of all of your content on the site with a pager, and that's kind of overwhelming. If you're looking for something very specific, um, you may not actually find it here um, because it's such a long, you know, on, in this case it's only two pages, but in the case of Stand Up to Cancer where we had um, thousands of teams on the site, Teams are each content, so uh, you know I would have to scroll through thousands and thousands of bits of content. That just won't work. So you can actually sort your content. Um, these are very useful. You can sort to say, you know what, I only want to see published things um, versus not published things. You can actually set your content to not published so that um, if you uncheck that published option where I showed you under publishing options where sticky and front page are, if you uncheck that, it won't be displayed for your end user, so you can keep editing it um, and leave it unpublished for a while and then publish it when you're ready. Um, so maybe you only want to see that content that's not published. 
um, because you actually want to take a look at it and try to kind of edit it and work with it. Um, or maybe you want to see all of your content that is content type um, featured item because you want to specifically try to edit a featured item. Um, or you want to see all of your content that, and this is calling from taxonomy, which I promise we'll talk about a little bit later, all of your content that fits under the taxonomy term community. So anything that I've tagged as a community item. Um, and then you can filter that, and it'll only show you those items that are specifically related to community. Um, and then you can kind of keep filtering down further if you want to. You can add um, additional arguments. When you want to go back, just click Reset, and it'll undo all of the arguments that you've placed in there to actually sort through your content. Um, this is also really nice, update options. This could save you a lot of time. I know that there's at least one person in this room who has a site who could have, uh, who, where users comment, and they could be putting a lot of uh, maybe defamatory comments, something that, that is really bad. Um, so you can actually just go in and check these little check boxes, and then unpublish or delete, and then update. For those of you who are seriously thinking about site administration or working with big sites, I strongly recommend that you use the unpublish option, not the delete option, even though delete is nice because it clears out your list. Um, but just think about if somebody has put, a, so, you know, maybe there's a really inflammatory comment that was put on there that could get, uh, that could generate a lawsuit. Keep the comment on your site. Don't show it to anyone, but keep it there so that you can prove that it was there and that you unpublished it. Um, so use unpublish by default instead of delete. Or maybe you put up a page and then you decide, you know, I really don't want that page. Um, and then three weeks later you realize, you know what, I really do want that page. Hopefully you didn't delete it. Hopefully you just unpublished it. Um, so try to use that for the most part, unless you know you really don't need it. But, yeah. It, it, everything is in the database. Everything is, yeah. So you can actually find out what happened with your site. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep it. <laughs> um, the other thing is hopefully your web developer has put, or you as your own web developer has put some kind of a CAPTCHA on your site um, so that you're not getting kind of spam bots just randomly throwing billions of comments or something like that on your site. Um, you're forcing it to recognize that it's a human. I prefer Mollum. I think that's a really good one. Um, and Mullum has very specific settings that allows me to say, you know what, for this content type, I know that only approved users can enter into this content type, so Mullum doesn't need to check it. But the other thing that you can do with Mullum is you can actually tag someone. Um, so you can tag an IP address. When you unpublish a piece of content or delete a piece of content, you can say, you know what, this piece of content came from an IP address that I really want to flag as being bad. And so you can do that not only with spam bots, but also with users who give a lot of bad stuff to your site. Um, okay, so, so there's a lot of options here, and, um, and you'll want to explore them in your own kind of dev environment. Uh, but it's an easy way to kind of quickly affect a lot of content. Um, I'm going to try to speed up here. Um, okay, taxonomy. So taxonomy, again, as I mentioned, kind of the core of, of Drupal. Um, taxonomy is vocabulary, it's metadata, it's kind of um, the information running behind your, your site. Um, so to edit taxonomy, it's also under content management and taxonomy. Um, your web developer has probably created sort of a, a list of vocabularies relevant to your site that are going to be on various content types. Um, so in this case, Remedy Center has different service categories. So I'm going to click on list terms, and these are the types of service categories that they have. This, having this taxonomy allows me as the web developer to create different um, ways of viewing events by category. So if I'm looking for employment, um, and, and I come to this site, I can actually filter the content that I receive as an end user by employment, because that's a taxonomy 
that has been set up, that's a vocabulary that has been set up, or a term that has been set up in a vocabulary in the taxonomy on the site. Um, it's easy to add terms. Um, so, you know, there's also, a, I had um, one particular person in this room ask me how, if he could add um, the word science to a list of, uh, voca to a vocabulary list. So what he would do is he would find that taxonomy vocabulary in his taxonomy, and then he would just go to it and go to, you know, he could just add it, but he might as well list terms first to see what is there and remind himself, and then click on add term, and then um, maybe, um, I think daycare is already on there, but, you know, I'm just going to add it again. Just enter it, and then, um, well, I clicked, I pressed return, but I should have pressed save to show you, and then press save, and now if we go back to list, okay, daycare wasn't on there. So daycare is now on there um, as a, a service category. So um, it's, it's really that easy. Now, if I'm going to create content and I'm creating a page, which the page content type um, oh, has a different set. So I'm actually going to create a service. Makes sense. Um, daycare is now one of the categories that I can choose from. So it's, it's really that, that simple. Um, the document that I'm going to give you a link to be able to download actually gives you also a, a really nice link to, that, to a page that really describes taxonomy in great depth. So definitely take a look at that. Um, I'm actually going to show you very quickly, those of you who are in views, you, you saw this yesterday, but I'm going to show you what I think is, is a really good example of how cool taxonomy can be for the end user. Um, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so here, this is a site called What's Your Dream, and it uh, encourages people to put their dreams online. Um, so here are a bunch of dreams that have been recently added. Well, now as the end user, I can search dreams by basically by different taxonomy. I could also have uh, this fun little um, thing called Tagadelic. This is also a, um, it's also a Drupal module that's pretty nice and, and simple to work with. So you can look for that. Um, and Tagadelic also sorts by taxonomy. But, you know, let's say I want to go in and I want to say, you know what, um, I want to see all dreams that have to do with the environment. And now I get all dreams that have something to do, if I were to actually click on the dream and, and read it, it has something to do with the environment in some capacity. So, um, so that's, that's a good example of, there, there are many other examples of how taxonomy can be used um, that are even better, but that's the one that's coming to my mind right now. Um, so um, let's see. Also, this document that you'll be able to download, I said it gives you specific URLs. It also gives you the path, so like the, the route you would take to actually get to administer something like taxonomy, so administer content management taxonomy. That's all in here, so if you didn't get that now, you can definitely get that from this document. Um, oh, yeah, another word of warning. If you're editing your taxonomy... Um, taxonomy vocabularies or terms, I strongly recommend that you not delete, um, you know, you can edit these, you could change one of these, but I strongly recommend that you not delete any of your vocabulary terms without checking with your web developer first, because as taxonomy is the core of Drupal, it's also the core of a lot of the functionality that they're going to create on your site. And those taxonomy terms might be critical to some of the views or displays that you're actually um, using on your site. So if you delete one, and it is, it has been kind of used in a, in a very core way in the development of your site, you could break your site. So, um, so just think about that as well if you didn't build your site yourself and you don't know exactly what's going on um, on the back end. Okay, menus. Um, again, I, I already mentioned that this is something I usually don't give editing access to clients for, um, but sometimes I do. And Sometimes it's really good to have this access. So menus are also going to be under site building. Um, so site building menus. And 
here's the list of all the menus that are that are set up for this particular site. Um, let's say as Mara, I want to change to Act Now By because Act Now By has that really bizarre about sort of that about option at the top that doesn't belong there. Um, there are a couple ways I can deal with this. One is I can go in and I can disable it and then save the configuration and it will go away. Um, another is I can actually move about to the bottom if I want it at the bottom instead with this little handle. Um, I can also delete it here or I can edit it to change the way the wording of it. Um, act now by about doesn't make sense but read about us might. So I could just change the label right there and um, under the under the edit tab. So I would I wouldn't change path because that's where that's the URL that this particular button is going to. Drupal works with the literal paths, not the aliases. Um, so whenever you see that, you'll see the literal path. You can put the alias in, and it'll work just fine. Um, you don't need to put the the actual path in. The alias will work, but and Drupal will then change it to the actual path. Um, so, you know, read about us. I'll just change that and then save. And I've now changed, oh, I moved it up again, but I've now changed the listing on there. Um, so that's, um, so that's kind of how you can, how you can edit the menus. Really do, again, really do sort of take stock of how rigid your design is um, because it may or may not sort of be amenable to menu adding. I could add as many links as I want on the side here. Um, and some of these pages, for example, um, oh, offerings, for example, have, they have menus on the side, so I could add as many links as I want here, and it's not going to hurt the design. But if I add links up here, it, it will. Um, so just kind of take stock of that. Um, let's see. User management. OK. Um, you also may have users on your site. Um, so under administer user management, I can now actually manage the users. Most of you, as uh, if, if you had somebody else build your site for you, you probably only have access to one of these options, which is the users option right here. This lists the users out for you exactly the same way that content was listed. And you can navigate between your users in exactly the same way. So you can say, you know what, I only want to see users whose role is site administrator. Uh, we'll talk about roles in a second, but um, right here, there are two roles that I have set up. I have someone who can edit the site, but they can't really do much, which is the interface that you're looking at right now. She can edit, but she can't change the whole thing. And then I have site administrator who can do all kinds of crazy things to the site. And then, of course, there's user one, which is me, um, who can do whatever I want to the site. Um, but so I've set up different levels of permissions, and people can do different amounts of things to the site. Uh, so I can sort by those roles. There's not a long list here, so I won't necessarily do that. I can sort by what they have access to, and I can sort by whether or not they're, sta they're active or blocked. Yeah? You said user one. Can you have different users for each? Can you have it numerous users and add them, add them, or is there a certain limit? You can have really as many users as you want. Um, user one is a special user. Um, user one is the user that creates the site, and user one is, is God, basically, on the site. So, but... Okay, so you can't um, have like user 13 and have a person knows they just know that their code is. They would have an ID. Yes, they would have an ID, and it would be you know 13, 14, whatever. But uh, but they'll have a name, and and you'll work with them based on username. Right. Thank you. And then and then you'll set up different roles for your users. Um, I'll go into roles in just a second because that was specifically asked about. But um, if I go here, I can actually edit the user. Let's say Alice who is currently a site administrator, has um, wrecked havoc on the site. And I've decided she, she wouldn't do that. She's amazing. But let's say she, she did. And she went, she went kind of nuts. And I was like, you know what? I have to really not allow her to do anything anymore. I can just turn off site administrator. And then she can log in, but she can't do anything. She has no permissions on the site. <coughs> um, so then I would save that, and she would be all set. Or let's say it were really bad. And I had to actually disable her user account entirely. 
I could block her as a user. There are many reasons why you might want to do that with people. Um, like when I left Stand Up to Cancer, I hope, I haven't checked, I hope that they blocked my administrative account. Um, I should check, that would be fun. Um, <laughs> but um, so, so you can, um, you know, you can actually change their settings here. If they forget their password, you can change their password. Um, if they change their email address and, and don't realize how they can do it themselves, which they can, but if you need to help them, you can do that here. Um, so there's, you know, you can actually edit whatever they put into their account. You can, uh, you can actually edit their account for them if you don't like their bio, which I don't recommend that you do. Um, but you can do a lot to your users. Um, the other thing that you can do, though, is go to, sorry, administer. Um, I like my custom menus. I, I've gotten used to them. Roles. Okay, so back to um, back to the question that you had, Christiana, which is, um, can you have a bunch of users and sort of assign them to certain things? And I'm going to need to wrap up a little earlier than I, I wanted to, but this is a good place to stop. Um, so you can actually create different roles in Drupal, and um, Mara doesn't have the ability to create new roles. She only has the ability... Oh, yes, yeah, she does. Sorry. Um, so, so she does on here because I gave her it. Um, so I can create a new role. Site administrator can administer the site. Site editor can make these changes that you've been seeing. Maybe I want another type of role that can only edit a very specific type of content. I want an editor who can only add events. So I can, I can add event manager as a role and then give that, that role the permission to only add events and then go in and create users and if we go back to editing a user here, um, see these are the roles that these users have. So I can say, okay, this user, Rain Bria, she should be able, well, she should be able to be an editor, um, but maybe she should be an event manager. So I would choose that after I had created the role and then assign it, you know, update and assign it to her. Or I would go into the edit, find that role and add it there. Um, I'm realizing I'm going to have to stop here, which is a pretty good place to end. There's more in this document that you can download. Um, to get to the document, you'll go to sunrainproductions.com slash DrupalCampLA. Oops, if I can spell. Um, sunrainproductions.com slash DrupalCampLA. And it's the last option here, Site Administration Basics. Um, this document has screen caps. It has step-by-step. -step. It's very, very detailed. The outline on here doesn't have the screen caps. So, you know, scroll down, download the document, and then there's also a basic HTML guide for some really simple HTML tips that might be useful to you. Um, so, um, so sunrainproductions.com slash DrupalCampLA. Are there questions about anything that you've seen? All right. Yes. Um, so each user has its own name, but can you allow a user to have uh, share access to pages? So grouping them so that this set of users can access those yeah. two pages? Yeah, yeah, that that's roles. Mm -hmm. um, you would do that using roles. And if you're if you're trying to do that with a specific content type, like let's say um, you know we have the events content type. Let's say you want a specific role to have access to to all um, all events that have to do with daycare, and then another role that has access to all events having to do with um, health and well-being. Let's say you wanted to do that. You could actually then add another module onto your uh, onto your site called Content Access, and Content Access allows you to literally go in and with each content type. And each thing sort of set very specific rules as to which role has access to that. So you can assign as many users as you want to a role. You assign permissions to the role itself. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I'm at the Drupal Chicks table for most of the afternoon later today. Um, so if you have questions, come find me. And I do want to make a plug for if you're in this session and this was useful to you, chances are very good that Nicole Bluto and my session this afternoon, site administration basic, oh, sorry, 
site migration basics or uh, the basics of migrating a site, a static site from desk, or not a static site, a site from desktop to live. Can't talk anymore. Um, that might be a really good session for you because if you are just installing Drupal for the first time and you're thinking, wow, I'm doing all this cool stuff here at camp, but how do I put it somewhere else so that the world can see it? That session will tell you how to do that. So definitely consider coming by that one. And uh, have a great day. Yeah. Um, 